Good evening and welcome to another Time Spans concert. My name is Thomas Fichter. I am the artistic director of the Time Spans Festival, and I'm here with Griffin Rue, Calder Foundation. The Time Spans Festival is presented and made possible by the Earl Brown Music Foundation Charitable Trust and uh, has been made possible since we started it in 2015. And I'd like to greet the trustees, Mary Beth Solins and Stephen Solins. They are right here. <laughs> and this evening is made possible because of the EBMF, the Old Brown Music Foundation, and the Calder Foundation. Calder Foundation has provided us with this fabulous mobile, and we co-produced this uh, uh, evening. And I'd like to greet Sandy Rohr, Calder, Founda Calder Foundation. <laughs> and Griffin Rue, of course who will also say a few words about, uh, maybe about the piece. Griffin, you were actually coming to Earl Brown's archive when we still had it in the Maronek. Uh, that was 11 years ago. Um, gathering all the information there was, I actually went to the Paul Zaher Foundation in Switzerland too, to read Calder's uh, uh, letters with Verez and what they had available of any documentation of this period of Calder's musical life. Um, so the genesis of tonight um, was basically that Earl Brown and Calder were friendly with one another through mutual friends, through uh, Boulez. Earl Brown approached Calder and said, I have this idea for a piece. Percussionists would play the mobile itself. So they would strike elements of the mobile. And um, in Earl Brown's words, Calder immediately said yes, immediately. And uh, at this point, Calder was um, 65, uh, so he was hip to these sort of new ideas of what one might do with art and music and cross-pollinating. Three years went by and Brown anticipated a colorful mobile that would be struck by percussionists and also be the conductor for a piece of music. And um, suddenly in 1966, this uh, Red Mobile arrives, and he has to rethink the score, and he rewrites this kind of epic piece uh, uh, quartet for this specific um, sculpture. The two points being that it's struck, and that it, it becomes more and more chaotic, and the kind of the motion of the sculpture becomes the the means by which the percussionists interpret the piece of music. So there's a written piece of music, some of it is traditional, some of it is graphic, some of it is a kind of intuitive um, marking. And there's several sections of the percussionists looking at the mobile and transposing, like an, in their imagination, a snapshot of where, where is the mobile at this point in time, and then onto the score, and where these elements fall onto the pieces of music, they play those phrases on the piece of music. So it's quite a complex uh, feat to, to do so, but also recognizing this mobile, and Calder's mobiles are always, always the same and always different, in a sense. Um, and so the mobile is in motion, they have this task, it's a totally unique thing in both of these artists' oeuvres. Um, it's like this kind of epochal moment of sculpture and avant-garde composition finally coming together. Calder does have a history of working with sound himself. He made four dozen mobiles that are sound producing mobiles with the elements clashing or gongs and beaters that, that smash into each other. There's a history of that in his work. He was very close with Edgar Varese, who pioneered noise music and um, lived across the street from my grandmother in the McDougal Sullivan Gardens. And that, so Calder and Varese were lifelong, like brothers. So there's a lot more to the story, but it kind of brings us to these rare performances. And um, this piece was not performed 
I, for 30 years, and um, originally the Mobile was sold, sadly, uh, and it shouldn't have been because it's an instrument, and, um, and there's more to the story, but maybe we can talk about that at another point, so thank you. Yes, there's a lot to talk about. Thank you very much. Just one remark before we start. Uh, you, in the program you saw, we say version one, version two. Of course, that is the same score. It's just that what makes the difference in the piece that just was explained allows you to hear two slightly different interpretations of the same piece. And the piece in between, if you read the program, program notes maybe, was written at the same time that this piece was written. And it also uses the idea of the mobile composition, which Brown called open form, and is thereby very closely related. Enjoy the evening.
Thank you. 